Hi, this is April from the Singer Featherweight Shop, and I'm here with my daughter Ruthie, and we are going to be starting a new series on the website called Getting to Know Your Featherweight. And this will be uh, one step at a time, so we're going to do this in several parts, and we're kind of going to be going through the instruction manual. Um, as you'll see, um, as you turn through your manual, you'll see that they instruct you in various steps as you get to know your machine. And so today um, we will be doing part one, which will be uh, winding a bobbin. Um, in this particular manual, it's on pages 10 and 11. And if you don't have a Singer manual, an original featherweight manual, we do have them replicas for sale on our site. We have a couple originals, and we also have one you can download for free and just look, you know, utilize on your phone uh, or print it off on your computer in a uh, large format. Okay, so looking at our instruction manual, we're gonna be winding a bobbin. So, and Ruthie's gonna be instructing us on how to do that. So what is the first thing we do today, Ruthie? So the first thing we do is we are going to put the bobbin on the bobbin winder. Then we will put the bobbin winder firmly on the belt. Then the next step is to loosen the stop back motion knob so that the needle bar does not go up and down. Then we're going to thread our machine. Now Ruthie is using a thread stand. It's uh, designed for the featherweight so that it can accommodate these heavier um, crosswound spools like Orifil. If you have too heavy of a spool on your machine, it can affect how the machine will wind that bobbin. It'll affect the tension. It'll also affect the tension with your stitches. So you can't hardly see it in this picture, but there is a thread stand there that's lifting that thread off the spool smoothly and evenly so that she can wind the bobbin uh, much more easily. So then after you put your thread through the bobbin winder tension unit, you take your thread and you go from the inside of the bobbin out through one of the holes in the bobbin. So then we are going to step on the foot controller so the machine runs. Okay, pause for just a second. You'll notice that Ruthie pulled that thread tail away from the bobbin as it was spinning. You can pull it um, you, or you can snip it closely up next to the bobbin, but you want to make sure that you get that cut off right up next to the bobbin or if there's any extra hanging out, um, especially outside the bobbin case, it can cause a skipped stitch. So Ruthie was able to tear hers off easily because of the spinning. Um, but is your bobbin winding smoothly, Ruthie, or is it over to the side a little bit? It is over more towards this side. And there is an adjustment that we can make to make it um, wind more evenly. There's a screw behind the bobbin winder tension unit, and if you loosen it, just a little bit, just a little bit, okay, then you can move the bracket over a hair so that the it'll wind more s smoothly. See, now it is winding very smooth. Oh yeah, I can see there the threads going back and forth. And it's a good idea to, when you wind your bobbins on your featherweight, to wind them pretty slowly and methodically. You don't want to zip right through it. These aren't like the new machines where they'll stop when they're full. Um, you want to stop just short of it being um, the edge of the bobbin so that it'll fit inside the bobbin case uh, very easily. And it'll come out of the bobbin case to uh, make the proper stitch. Okay, that is part one, winding a bobbin with um, April and Ruthie. Um, and we're from the Singer Featherweight Shop. If you have any questions, you can feel free to email us or visit our website at singer-featherweight.com. We'll see you next time.